second race of the weekend then for the Porsche Carrera Cup. Yesterday, we had a very, very exciting race. It's Christian Engelhardt on uh, pole position, but the silver and blue Black Falcon car. He was outgunned into turn one by the Comrade entry of Dennis Olsen, the double win up from the opening round at Hockenheim. A tight squeeze into the first corner. But it was also making the best start, which would prove to be decisive as he got ahead of Engelhardt with Mikael Amamala just behind in third place. Franz Conrad absolutely delighted with his Norwegian driver for getting such a good start. The two Project One teammates then battling for fifth place. Uh, Nick Yaloli on board with him now, the British driver. Battling away with his teammate, Larry Ten Vorda. And then he got a bit too tight going into turn three. And there was contact and spun around was Nick Yaloli. Nick Yaloli going round quickly recovering and dropping a few positions his teammate would pick up a drive-through penalty from the stewards as a result of that but the battle of the race was this one as Christopher Zosling after lap after lap behind uh, Tommy Priding finally made his way through with a very good pass those two were battling for fourth position the whole race through here's the view back from Dennis Olsen as he fended off again for lap after lap, Christian Engelhardt, we have Mikael Amamala right behind as well. The top three were nose to tail for 18 laps of the race, more or less. A glance there, a glancing blow coming out of the last turn. Dennis Olsen, though, got his foot down, and after 18 laps of racing, almost 25 minutes, there was just one tenth of a second between them. But it was Dennis Olsen that took his third victory on the bounce. That's three wins out of three now for the Norwegian. Second place going the way of Christian Engelhardt, and Mikael Amamalap was third in yesterday's race. So those highlights of the uh, first race yesterday. Uh, the grid for this one is going to be different to yesterday's grid because it's based on second fastest lap times. So Christian Engelhardt once again will be on pole position and there he is the 29 year old Bavarian who has uh, come into this championship with uh, Black Falcon the very experienced GT team coming into the Porsche Carrera Cup for the first time they'll be looking for their first win Alex the team you know well because you are part of the Black Falcon outfit yeah exactly it's my team for the endurance uh, for my endurance career let's say like that uh, I'm racing with them VLN and 24 hours Nürburgring and we also race together in Dubai so a really good team it's the first time or the first year they are challenging the Porsche Carrera Cup in this sprint mode but the moment we see they are looking good so already their second race already pole in the pole and the chief podium yesterday with Christian Engelhardt so mm. it's looking good for them. Absolutely yeah and a great drive with Christian Engelhardt three times a runner-up in the championship first front row starting position of the year for Christopher Zosling who had that great battle with Tommy Priding yesterday I caught up with Christopher this morning and he uh, he loved the battle he said I really enjoyed that he said it's so hard to pass around here though as you see Mikhail Amamola who was uh, third on the grid and third in yesterday's race yeah, Christopher Zosling saying it's so hard to pass here you go off the line and it was so dusty and we saw that with a lot of uh, sl slow-mo shots that any uh, driver going offline was kicking up a lot of dust and he said really turn one was the only place and Tommy was defending really well uh, so he was pleased to get through he said today hopefully I'll be the one defending first position that would be ideal he's going well in the championship Christopher Zosling in third place overall there then is the driver that leads the championship three wins out of three he's got a maximum score of 75 points he is uh, well clear of Mikhail Amamala, who's second in the championship on 56. Dennis Olsen caught up with him yesterday, and he said he knew after a point that he wasn't going to be able to get away from Christian Engelhardt or Mikhail Amamala, so he decided to just concentrate on not making any mistakes. And it was that slightly better start that he had uh, that proved decisive in the end. He said, uh, Christian, he said, you know, he gave me a little, tiny little push through the last corner, but it was nothing too bad. He said, uh, I knew he'd have to really launch a, a big attack and take me out if he wanted to come past and uh, so I wasn't prepared to over defend so uh, there you've seen the uh, top four on the grid the top five because Tommy Prining starting fifth yesterday's uh, top rookie once again uh, the young Austrian having come up through the Formula 4 championship here is Nick Yaloli the driver from Solihull who was uh, twice a top six finisher in the GP3 championship is here uh, with the Project One Deutsche Post team and there we have uh, Gabriela Piano who's coming into the championship for the first time uh, this season also with a good qualifying position starting on the fourth row of the grid the Italian from Biella who's come up through VLN racing and the Nürburgring 24-hour uh, championship race as well the big 24-hour race which is happening next week has done some Super Sport Cup racing in Porsches as well Gabriella Piano so another quick Italian coming into the championship uh, so they can see the uh, heat haze uh, coming through and uh, you, uh, you actually wrote, you were with the project one team weren't you so they're a top team in this uh, championship they've been used to a lot of success over the years and taken championship titles most recently with uh, Philip Henger you, you raced against in 2015 uh, but they've got two youngish drivers coming through now and, it, and it'll take a little time for them to get used to the, the cars 
Yeah, I mean, they, they had already Nick Jedoli and David Coleman, they raced already last year, so they have one year of experience. And we see this in Nick Jedoli, this, this year a runner-up, he's pretty much in the top uh, top 10, top 7 positions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like you were saying, it was my, my team as a racing uh, career cup, I was teaming with Philip and Matteo Caroli and Sean Johnston. And it was a really good team, learned a lot those years, but it's like you were saying, career cup is a difficult uh, championship, you always need a year, a year and a half till you get into the car. We were talking also yesterday, it's a really hard car to drive. Mm. When you learn or when you know how to drive this car fast and, and good, then when you sit in a GT3 or an, even another car, you are straight fast because it l gives you a lot of knowledge how to behave with the weight, the transfer of the weight, to turn the car, to rotate and, and so on. So it was a good learning year and good progress I, I made. And you still have that, you still drive that Porsche, the same Porsche, don't you? Yeah, I'm still driving the Porsche. I, I will drive the same car, this same car, this new model next next weekend on the, on the North Life. We've been there with like Falcon, the first team who set the car in the North Life and who the first time uh, this car will hit the, the 24 hours the grid so i'm happy to take part to be part of this project and let's see how it's going i tell you i will tell you in <laughs> seven days and <laughs> six seven hours you're still awake <laughs> yeah you're still awake yeah <laughs> you've got quite a good record so it's three 24 hours and three wins isn't it so far three class wins with two Dubai. two yeah. so i just did two 24 hours in my life uh, 24 hours new grid last year and won it straight away and 24 hours dubai and won it straight away so i would just want to get the crown and I tried next week to do my third 24 hours ever and win my third 24 hours, so that will be a really good uh, result for me. Fantastic, yeah, and you see the grid there, the starting grid, uh, the full top 10. And uh, yeah, these cars definitely have longevity in the, uh, the the British Porsche Carrera Cup, the Porsche Carrera Cup GB. Dan Kamish has done, dominated the championship for the last couple of years. He sold his uh, car, because it's quite a high market for cars with track days, so he sold his championship winning car. But actually this year he's driving the same championship but with an older car, it's still quick, it's a 2015 model car and uh, he's still dominating the championship, at least winning the championship and had a very good start to the year once again he's racing at Alton Park this weekend for the uh, British Touring Car Championship package. So the car's on their formation lap, it's going to be another 18 lap race, we've got 24 cars on the grid, a very healthy uh, grid of cars indeed. It is going to be critically uh, about the start of the race, isn't it, Alex? Because as Christopher Zosting was saying yesterday, it's not that easy to overtake around here because the cars are so evenly matched. Yeah, exactly. The car is so even that it's really hard to get. You need to... The main point where you can overtake is the straight line where you have to really get a good run out of the last corner and try to get the top of the car in front and then pull the movement away in the in the, in the first corner on the brakes. But like you were saying, the car is so even, so, so, so similar together that it's not easy to, to get that movement away. There you can see the track layout, anti-clockwise uh, circuit here. It's a, a tri-oval which was uh, built in 2000 when IndyCar racing came to Europe. So it's not a traditional oval, it's just got the three high-speed banked corners. They uh, use part of the circuit, they dip in and out of it, but there is a, a more traditional uh, road circuit on the infield which they use. So they're on the banking now, they turn off before they get to uh, turn one of the uh, tri-oval, cut that corner down the infield through turns one, two, three and four and then they rejoin the, uh, the circuit briefly, the tri-oval, and then turn off it again through the infield before rejoining for the last banked corner, which takes a lot of speed. They can see it just in the background of your shot as the last driver, Ronya Asman, she lines up in her number 41 Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car, ready to go, 450 foot plus brake horsepower of car, ready to go racing here at the Euro Speedway. We've got the red lights on. As soon as they go out, we're going to get underway. Can Christian Engelhardt get a better start this time from pole position to the left of your picture? Yes, he can. That's a very good start. Christopher Zoshin is away well also. And it's going to be side by side by side for third place. Mikhail Muller is in the middle of a Conrad sandwich. He's going to have to be brave on the brakes. He just about gets there in time and that filters through. Tommy Priney making a decent start as well. The project behind. cars has gone off. I'm afraid, and out is the number 14 machine of uh, Marias Nacken, and it's uh, Larry Tenvorda that he came together with. So, Larry, here we go. Turbulent weekend so far, I'm afraid, with one thing and another. Uh, as Christopher Zosling shows his nose, as I looked at the inside of Christian Engelhardt here early on, that's on the way into the uh, left-hander at turn six as they come back off the oval into the sweeping right-hander at turn seven. They will now go. Yaloli looks like he's made a decent start to the race as well as the rest of them filter their way through. But Christopher Zosling is looking for his first win of the season here. He's going to try and get past the three-time runner-up in the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland. 
Can he do it? The Swiss driver based in uh, Bristol in the UK gets very close as they go to the left-hander, putting a lot of pressure on Christian Engelhardt here, but Christian will be desperate to get a, a win for his uh, new team, and Black Falcon is desperate to get their first win in the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland. So there are the top three absolutely together working their way through the field. Dennis Olsen has won all the races so far, but he's fourth at the moment, and that is a broken Wolf Nitan car, the driver that's one of the front runners in Class B for the amateur drivers. Looks like the radiator has uh, been cracked as well. Fluid is leaking on the circuit. The top three, top four go through. Meanwhile, Dennis Olsen spoke to him this morning, uh, saying that, uh, you know, you're just going to try and pick up some points today. You can't win all the races, as we see Nacken's uh, wounded car dragging its way back to the pits. The safety car is going to be deployed. So the safety car is waiting to pick them up because the number nine Porsche, which we saw of uh, Wolf Natan, is stranded just on the edge of the circuit. So that's on the way into the left hand of turn six as they come off the uh, tri-oval. They're about to get to that point now. You'll see it in your shots in a second. To the right, there it is, right on the edge of the circuit. So that's in a precarious position. So Wolf Natan, uh, the likeable Dutchman, I'm afraid, is already out of the race. But Alex, perfect start for Christian Engelhardt. He didn't make a terrible start yesterday, but uh, Dennis Olsen showed him the way into turn one. And so yeah. Christian, a lot of pressure, really, because he knew how important it was to get a good start in this race. Yeah, exactly. Yesterday I talked to Black Falcon. They had some issue in the, in the clutch of the car. That's why he lost the, the, this bit of time on the, on the start. Right. And today it looks like everything uh, is working right. So really good start from Christian Engelhardt. Definitely, I will see now an old school battle with Christian Engelhardt, Christopher Zoglin, Michel Amur. We see now the car jumping straight off the lines, really good traction and not having the issue he had yesterday with the, with the clutch. Like I was saying, we'll see now a really good battle between the old school Christian Engelhardt, Christopher Zöcklin and Michel Amamuller. Three guys, plenty of experience, although mm. I also raced together with them in, uh, in 2015 when I did Career Cup and also we see now the, the crash in the back uh, with Marius Nacken and, and Larry Tenforda. Had a turn one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Marius Nacken was in the inside. Yeah. Bit unlucky there, actually. I it was think the three abreast, weren't they? Yeah, my, my, from my point of view, Larry Tenforda ran a bit of area. He went too much to the left, and then he did. He had a sandwich with Gabriele Piana and Gitana Russell. From my point of view, he should have left a little bit more. He was already outside. Yeah, he pushed too much to the left and squeezed the, all the cars together. So yeah, yeah, try to try to avoid putting two wheels on the grass. But maybe you should have yeah. gone for that option. And then again, you only have. A tenth of a second to think about. Yeah, this situation is better. You keep driving straight. Even if you go on the grass, you will not lose massively. But if you try to keep to the left, all the cars are coming out of the corner with the speed, and it's it's really if you squeeze to the left. Yeah, we see also now Wolfgang Nathan. And she went over the um, curbs, didn't he? And then spun around the uh, other amateur driver, Jorn Schmidt, start up, but broke his car in the process. But that was Wolf. Uh, having to take to, to the grass and the curbs and then getting out of shape and then spearing into the side of the number 12 car. I was rather disconsolate about all of that. And Wolf Notan, his car, looking to a halt a little bit after that, two corners after that. Uh, so the safety car has peeled in. We're about to go racing again and leading the way, Christian Engelhardt, Christopher Zosling, second place, Mikhail Amamala in third, Dennis Olsen, the championship leader in fourth. Christopher Zosling very good on the brakes on the way to turn one. He was a couple of lengths back. He's now right underneath the rear wing of the race leader, looking determined, the very likeable Christopher Zosling, who always seems to be very relaxed and chilled out when you see him in the pits chatting to, uh, in the paddock chatting to other drivers. And, very, uh, very competitive driver, though, and getting better and better with each and every year in the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland. Uh, Christian Engelhardt, who's leading the race, is, is his 10th season now driving these cars, having come up initially through single-seaters in the Formula BMW Championship. So Christopher Zosling pushing hard. And so far this year, every race has been won by the driver starting second on the grid. That's been Dennis Olsen three times so far. Dennis fourth on the grid this time. Zosling is the one second on the grid. Can he keep that trend going and get a win here? It's not going to be for the want of trying, is it? He's trying absolutely everything here, looking to the inside, looking to the outside, putting all sorts of pressure on. He's got to be careful not to leave the door open because when you're in a group like this, Alex, if you've got two or three cars behind you, if you try a move and it doesn't work, you can lose your own position. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, Now we see a battle between P1 and P6 of the grid. And exactly, if you now make a mistake, you will drop. You can be in the front of the pack and you will drop 
probably immediately to the to the rear of the pack so you need to be really careful not to do any mistake and if you go for a, for an overtake you have to be sure it's going to be done if not like we were saying uh, you can really uh, not, need, not even win a position so lose more yeah top six together then Engel, Hart, Zoschling, and Mamola, the top three. Olsen, the points leader in fourth place. Yaloli going well in fifth position. Sixth place, Tommy Prining lost a position to Yaloli off the line. And then a bit of a gap back to the next group, three seconds back. The second group in seventh place, leading that one out. He made a good start as well, I noticed, off the line. Luca Retten back up. And uh, then Gabriela Piana, number four, in eighth place. Ninth and tenth, then, you've got the number 17 car of Max Van Splunter, and he's gained a position. And in 10th place, Henrik Skoog, who has also gained a couple of positions to be in the top 10. Ryan Cullen had a difficult day yesterday, got some contacts uh, placed upon him in the race. He's just outside the top 10 in 11th place. Wolfgang Triller uh, is not, for once, leading the uh, Class B standings. The uh, reigning champion is actually second in the class in 16th place overall. And the driver that leads the way in that respect is Carlos Rivas, who got onto the podium in the Class B entry yesterday. So Rivas, Trilling, and then third in the... Uh, am category is Matthias Jeserich in the Huber racing car. So that's the way it stands in that category. Fast drivers, great shot there as they whiz past the uh, wall. 126s, mid 126s uh, they are doing. It's right in the middle of the race, it seemed to be the sweet spot for really quick lap times uh, yesterday. Slightly longer race yesterday of 24 laps. Engelhart just 0.4 of a second clear of Zosling. You can see how he closes up under braking though. One thing that Christopher said to me this morning, though, was that you, you can't really try and move around the outside into turn one, Alex, because the corner tightens up. There's not much runoff on the on the way out of the corner. No, it's a, it's not an easy corner. Even if you, for example, locked and you lose the apex of the corner, you, you have a runoff area, but the runoff area is all around the oval of the circuit, so it's really not worth to, to lose your brakes and miss the corner. If not, you will lose a lot of time too, because you need to go all around the all around the oval and and. You lose massively time and positions on the on a race. Yeah, unless you uh, get a real huge toe. But even uh, then, Christopher was saying that the toe of the straight's not that long that you get a really good toe. So it's all having to be done on the brakes. They're just edging away slightly now from Amomala in third place. And Dennis Olsen has just set the fastest first sector of the lap so far, though, and gained a tenth, only a tenth on those ahead of him. They're all lapping very, very similar lap times. As you can see, 125.987 for the leader, 125.999 for second place, and then very low 126s for the group behind, just falling away ever so slightly. So, mostly now trying to get a run again. He's giving himself a bit more freedom here, perhaps, to try some different lines because they are definitely pulling away from Amma Muller, Olsen, Yaloli, and Prining in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth positions. We're at one quarter at race distance. Can't quite get close enough coming onto the straight. That's the problem, isn't it? He needs to be closer coming onto the straight. He's about two lengths back, and by the time he gains that ground back, they're already into the corner at turn one. Yeah, we see Greta Engelhardt is having a really good last sector. So I think this is why Christopher Sirklin is struggling to, to get a, a good run on the on the main straight. And then we also see Amer Müller is now focusing a bit more in blocking the position to Dennis Olsen. We have some yellow flag in sector three. Corner three. Uh, yes. So again, green delay. So yeah, we can see. Amir Müller is now focusing now on on Dennis Olsen to block the position, and he's losing a bit this rhythm to, to Christopher Zerklin. And That was the uh, Henrik Skoog number twenty car running wide, and just in uh, behind him, Ryan Cullen making a move on uh, David Cockman there to squeeze through. So Cullen. Uh, be 11th now. So we'll see, I think we will see also some nice battles between Michael Amamula, uh, Dennis Olsen and Nick Jaloli. And Thomas Pranin is now joining as well the party, so... I believe Dennis Olsen doesn't want to stay in fourth place, he wants to achieve another podium. So we'll definitely go for uh, for an overtake maneuver into, into Amamula, if he has the chance. Half a second between the top two. It's never been much more than that. 0.4 of a second, 0.5 of a second, all the way through. And at times, they've been nose to tail. I think you're only there in the uh, 93 car, who's picked up uh, points in every race. Despite they being spun around yesterday, still managed to get a uh, decent result. As we see some contact on the way to turn one. That's 17, the blue and white Max Van Splunteren car, getting very close to Gabriella Piana. 
locked the front left. Came from quite a long way back. There was contact there. Piana did what he said and, and tried not to close the door too much into the corner, but then had to take to the grass and ended up losing the position. So that will be down to ninth place. Christian Engelhardt having set the fastest lap of the race now with a 125.651 last time around. Just to give himself a slight bit of breathing space here. Good battles going on further back in the top ten as well. There's David Coltman and Ryan Col uh, Cullen still having a, uh, a battle here for 11th place. They're trying to get themselves up into the top ten. Cullen in the number 26 car, the uh, Irish driver. Up for a second season in the Bush crowd. Them, but a very experienced Porsche racer in other championships internationally as well. So here we see Engelhardt, eight laps done, just eking out that gap now, 0.7 of a second clear of uh, Zosling doing a fantastic job to stretch his legs. Amma Muller is only 0.2 of a second clear of Olsen, but still holding on to the final spot on the podium. Slowly and Prining on a very similar pace as well. Ryan Cullen having a big go down the inside here onto the kerbs, but that puts him on the outside line for the exit and turn two. So once again, David Coltman fending him off. Pretty good battle going on here. 11th and 12th. Cullen got ahead for a point a couple of laps ago. He's back down into 12th place now. See now, I remember he's making a fastest first sector. So I probably maybe catch it back. We'll catch back again. Christopher Sutherland and Christian Engelhar. So still everything is open for a, for a change of positions. Well, we focus now on the battle for P8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 with Gabriele Piana, Ingris Cook, Max van Splunteren, and David Coltman. And Wolfgang Triller is now uh, 0.4, no, 4.8 seconds rather clear of the 42 car of Matthias Jeserich, so cementing second place, but still quite uh, a long way back, one and a half seconds back on the Class B leader, which is the number six class of Ubas cars. At the moment, Black Falcon are on for the overall win and also for a Class B win because they both come from Black Falcon team, Christian Engelhardt and Carlos Rivas, first and 14th, but both leading their respective classes. Yesterday, Alex, we saw the, uh, the Michelin tyres really did hold up. They uh, didn't lose too much pace towards the end of the race, but it is a longer race today. It's uh, 24 laps rather than 18. Yeah, the lap is the, today the 35 minutes rate, so it's 34 laps. And but and the temperature is higher than yesterday, definitely. Even if we are earlier in the morning, we, we already feel that. So might we might see some driver maybe struggling towards the end of the race a bit with the tire. But nevertheless, Michelin tire is a really good tire. They have really good performance, and they, they usually don't degrade too massively. But can be that with this temperature, if you are pushing too much at the beginning of the race, you might have some struggle at the end to, to keep the tyres in a, in a good life. Now we can see uh, Carlos Rivas at the head of the group there with the silver and gold stripe. That's the leader of the um, class. He's in 14th place overall. Behind him, he's got a Class A driver, which is Richard Gonda. He's the Slovakian in 15th place. And 16th then, the one behind, is Wolfgang Triller, number 13, seconds in Class. Back of this uh, lead group of six, Tommy Prining is just falling away from them a little bit in the second of the turquoise, white and blue Conrad's uh, cars. There was Dennis Olsen, his teammate, who leads the championship. They're in fourth place. And slightly resigned to the fact that he probably wasn't going to win four races on the trot from fourth on the grid. As I say, he had to pick up that point. It's Sven Muller, who won the championship to the left of your picture, won the championship last year in the Porsche Super Cup and get his, got his maiden uh, GT Masters victory uh, yesterday in uh, a Porsche. He's racing uh, another one hour GT Masters race today. And we come through the Porsche Junior scheme, which, amongst others, Tommy Prining has come through. It's on a one year deal, and if you impress and do a good job, and uh, continue that, that support for another season. But without that, a lot of these drivers wouldn't be able to find the funds in the backing to be able to compete in this uh, high, very high level of sport. There is Tommy Prining. Started to come back at them a little bit now. And getting himself back onto the tail of Nick Yololi. He had dropped back a couple of lengths, but he's almost back with them now. So, fastest first sector of the lap for anybody so far has just gone to Mikhail Amamola with a 28.4. So he's gained a tenth back on Zosling. But he's uh, just about half a second behind him, trying to close that gap once again. Edging away from Olsen, Yellowly and Prining there, who you see in fourth, fifth and sixth positions. Nick Yellowly in the yellow 
white and black Deutsche Post Project 1 car, which is a slightly different livery to previous years. Same colour scheme, but slightly different luck to the car. And then we have, away from this league group in seventh place, it's still Luca Rettenbacher hanging on to the position. Actually pulling away now from the eighth place car of Gabriella Piana, the Italian driver, who in turn has got a second and a half gap back to Henrik Skoog in ninth place. And still in tenth, Max van Splunteren in the 17 car. We've still got Kolkman from Cullen for 11th and 12th, and that gap opening up now, so the gap growing between them. It was just so Christian how the last two laps he did the fastest lap of the race, and that gave him uh, now a gap of 1.3 seconds to Christopher Circling, so some fresh air for him, some uh, space between the two first drivers of the of the race. So now we have some, the, the position are a little bit standing. Uh, we just have possibly a battle between Thomas Prynin and Mick Jelloli and Dennis Olsen, which are really close together. Well, we have Amen Muller, which is also one second behind Christopher Zirklin. So solid three, first position of the of the, of the the race. Yeah, so look at the pace from uh, yesterday's race. The fastest uh, laps were in the, in the mid 125s for most of the front runners. So low 125s, faster pace. As we see the uh, damaged and retired now Manias Nakamkar. He looks uh, very distraught about all of that. Missing the chance to uh, pick up more experience and uh, more points to win the championship. Ten, also out of the race after contact with uh, Jorn Schmidt's star. Those two came together. So we've had three retirees so far in the race. Here we go down into turn one. This is the 17 car of Max Van Splunter and having a real battle with David Cockman holding on to his place but only just. This is the battle for 11th spot and Ryan Cullen might be able to catch them back up here if they start battling one another. We have lost about a second to them but I think Ryan very quickly will get back onto the tail of this fight if they start to hold each other up especially at turn one by either over attacking or over defending so Ryan Cullen who also lives uh, near Christopher Zosling in Bristol, the Irish uh, driver in his second season in this championship, but raced prior to that in the Porsche Carrera Cup GB and got uh, quite a few top 10 finishes that year. Like Nick Yellow, he's also raced in GP3, Ryan Cullen. So plenty of experience, Formula Ford before that, plenty of experience in single-seaters before coming into Porsches. There, Ryan, just in the background, you can see the number 26 car. He's very hopeful to get himself into the top 10. The flashing of the lights to try and distract the driver ahead. Coming from uh, Coltman in the number 16 car, another of the Project One entries. Got different uh, liveries, mainly an all white car, but he is teammates to Nick Yaloli and Larry Tenborda. So we're about halfway into the race, 125.3s. Christian Engelhart's uh, pace is so consistent, isn't he? That, that's something he's been a trademark of his really over the years. He's able to keep that speed going all the way through the race, which is why he's now almost two seconds clear of Zosli. Yeah, he, he struggled a bit at the beginning of the race Max Splunter now locking the tyres and lose the position to David Kogman, yeah. But he struggled a bit at the beginning of the race and might be he was caring about the tyres a bit because he knows it's a long race and it's warm and now he's, he's able to use the, the fresh of the tyres and, and put the hammer down and have a consistent lap times in the 25s. We see now the lock up uh, from left. Still the smoke, trying to do it into the ABS style with the brake, with either left foot or right foot, depends on which are braking him. Like we were talking before, not so much place where to run off. So yeah, Christian Engelhardt is making good lap times now, so he's giving him the chance to pull, to, to make a gap. With so clean, oh, Philip Sagar lost in the car in the brakes. Oof, I say oh, almost, almost clipping his teammate. Oof, that was very close. Almost, as you say, two teammates uh, out together there. Just, just avoided contact with one another. So we saw that huge lockup for Max Van Splunter, and that will presumably now put a flat spot on the tyre. Will, will he get some vibration from that? Yeah, yeah. Usually, depends how big is the flag pot. As far as we've seen, it was quite a decent one. <laughs> so it will put some vibration on your steering wheel. It's not something really big, but you need to really take care on the, on the, also in the upcoming brakes because you have already this flat spot, this flat side on the tyre, and then. It always you break it has it's not the tire is not run anymore so it goes again on the same spot and you have the chance to keep locking and making this flat spot bigger and bigger so you need to take care in the next braking not to break too hard 
that you get again in this to this flat spot. Yeah. Then you can, after a few corners, you can start to break again harder because the, 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 the tire got round a little bit again. Yeah. But two, three corners after you did, you have to take care to not break too hard. If not, you will clip this flat side of the tire again. Just looking further down the timing screen at the uh, the top three who are together now, 15th, 16th and 17th. Well, together in terms of position, not together on the track. So some gaps between them, uh, but not much of one that's coming down. So Carlos Rivas is 15th, car number six. He still leads class B, but Wolfgang Trilling uh, has now got up to 16th place and 0.3 of a second behind. So he's closing that gap. There's a big gap of uh, six and a half seconds back to third in the category, though, which is 42, Matthias uh, Yeserich, fourth in the... Class B entry is uh, Chito Preciosa. Uh, sorry, is uh, Stefan Rekhoff in the Chito Preciosa car. That's car number 33. We see Dennis Olsen attacking Michel Müller now, mm. trying to get to push for that third position, last last step on the podium. 75 points leads the championship. Michel Amamala, the driver ahead of him, is the driver that is uh, his closest rival in the championship on 56 points. Amamala was actually on pole position for both of the races in the opening round at Hockenheim, but both times Dennis Olsen was able to find a way past him, not off the start, but later on into the race. So Mikael will be, he's had a good season so far, he's fourth in the championship last year, but he knows he needs to start taking some points back away from Dennis Olsen. So gonna make that car as wide as possible. That will, I'm sure, allow Nick Yololi to get in on the action. They've dropped now Tommy Pryde, who's fallen away from their pace. Tommy having that really good battle with Christopher Zosling yesterday. You saw on the uh, highlights replay at the start of today's broadcast, the, the move that Christopher Zosling pulled off to get through and get fourth place. But what you didn't see was around about uh, 12, 13 laps of Tommy Prining defending brilliantly the young rookie driver, the Austrian, from the um, Swiss driver, Christopher Zosling. So it was a long time he managed to keep him behind, bearing in mind Christopher's been driving these Porsches now since 2014. So good effort from Tommy Prining, he's just fallen away from the pace a little bit, but he's uh, still comfortable in sixth place, seven, nearly seven seconds clear of Rettenbacher. So there you see the leader already through, Christian Engelhardt, Christopher Zosling holding on now, the gap's still just under two seconds. And again, there you see number one, the turquoise white and blue car of Olsen getting close under braking to the orange grey and silver, grey and black car rather, of Mikhail Amamala. 87 is Amamala, and then this is the battle for the final place on the podium. Conrad Motorsport, Franz Conrad's team having an excellent season so far. They lead the team standings after the first three races of the championship from MRS GT Racing. And then with their consistency, Team Deutsche Post by Project One are third in the team standings. Wolfgang Triller, Wolf Tan, the top two in the Class B standings, but with Wolfgang Tan out of the race, it should be an opportunity for Wolfgang Triller to extend his advantage. There were level on points coming into this race on 30 each because uh, Wolfgang Triller didn't pick up any points in race two at Hockenheim, but now Wolfgang, if he can hold on to second, maybe even win his class, he will extend his or move into the proper lead of the Class B Championship. 16 out of the 24 laps now completed then in the race, and it's beginning to look a lot more comfortable for Christian Engelhardt, but a lot less comfortable for Mikael Amamala. Dennis Olsen has preserved the tyres well, I think, hasn't he, Alex? Yeah, it's looked like he's within really, really close to Mikael Amamala. He's putting some decent pressure on, on him, and we might to see we might to see how it develops in the next lap, if he gets really a chance to, to pass Mikael Amamula. Of course, Mikael Amamula is a driver with plenty of experience, you know how to defend his position really well, but we already saw in Hockenheim, there was no no way to him to him to block Dennis Olsen to go through, and he lost two times the, the first place on the race, so we'll see now if Dennis Olsen pulled another brilliant uh, overtaking manoeuvre and he can manage to pass uh, Mikel Amamuda. Yeah, Dennis was the top rookie last year in the Porsche Carrera Cup at Deutschland. Finished third overall behind Sven Muller, who won, and Christian Engelhardt, who the third time in four years finished second in the championship. So, Porsche junior driver Dennis Olsen showing his worth here. Fourth place, though. I think it'd take too big a risk, though, Willie, knowing that he's the championship leader and knowing that you know, fourth place is still good points, and he's only going to lose a couple of points to Mikael Amamala, who's only one position ahead of him. So sometimes when you're in the position of, of leading a race or leading a championship, you have to think about perhaps safety sometimes and not taking a, such a big risk. Yeah, exactly. You need to always think uh, cold and, and try to not make any uh, 
too early or unpredicted maneuver because if you are battling for a championship you want to get every point it's much better to get a fourth place the points for fourth play uh, than get uh, go home with with zero when we see yeah. christian engelhardt is almost away he opening the gap lap by lap to cross over so in the one which is missed is losing sometimes in the last lap so michael amadou is also getting really close to it's getting closer and closer to christopher Sokli. so we might see also in the last lap a battle for for second and third position three quarters of the way through there is luca retten back at number three another of the conrad drivers bit of a lock up from him piana close behind in the number four car in eighth place there's skoog in ninth and Altman in tenth and there's max van splinter and had his own lock up a while ago which is why he's out of the top 10 now in 11th place. But with Ryan Cullen getting ever closer to him, like in the blue, black and white number 26 car. An Irish driver racing with the Race Union Hubert Racing Team, another very experienced uh, Porsche outfit. Slight undulation there as they come out of turn six and rejoin the tri-oval. And they come back off it, back into the infield section, left through turn six into a big sweeping right-hander at turn seven. Turn seven looks like quite an important corner, this big big right-hander, because it takes you onto the, the middle straight, so you need to get a good exit there, there I guess. Yeah, it's a really, it's really fast corner. We see now Wolfgang Trillen trying to overtake Carlos Rivas, challenge for the first position of the Amateur Cup. The B Cup, B Class. So Carlos Rivas, the leader of the championship at the moment. Wolfgang Trillen trying to uh, squeeze in there. You've seen all the race track, left, right, Carlos River defending on the inside. But needs to make this car as wide as possible. We're doing a, a good job. Wolfgang Triller came into Porsche Cup Deutschland last year and won in his first attempt. Class B is there just behind in the uh, the black and sort of luminous yellow car, the number 13 car. That is Wolfgang, co leader in the points, but we've walked out of the race. As I say, she'll be moving into the points lead. Carlos Rivers, though, fending him off nicely. The Luxembourg-based driver, he did some Porsche Supercut racing last year, but mainly he's been racing in the GT3 Cup Challenge, the Benelux Challenge, which has been a top four finisher for two years running. Missed a bit of Porsches in France a few years ago, about five years ago in the Porsche Carrera Cup, uh, the French version of this championship, and uh, doing well to keep Wolfgang Triller behind him. So a good battle this, as Alex says, for the lead of and class or class B, which has its own separate points uh, system and own trophies as well. They'll have their own separate podium at the end of the race. Now, well clear now, 13 and a half seconds clear of third in the class, which is Matthias Gesserich. So that gap's grown from seven to over 12 seconds in the last three or four laps. Uh, Gesserich, though, is 20 seconds clear of fourth in the class, which is uh, Stefan Rekopf, number 33. Engelhardt's gone through. He's still lapping very quickly, isn't he? 125.2. I mean, I think his best is a 125.0, isn't it? So he's still keeping the consistency there. Mikael Amamala is still having to fend off Dennis Olsen, though. This is the battle for third place. Nick Yeloli is right with them. Nick getting better and better with each uh, race. It's his second season in the championship, having been up in the top six uh, last year. Doing a good job hanging on to them. Some, saw some oversteer going out of the corner for Dennis Olsen. So might be struggling a bit with the traction. When you're in a position, it's not so easy because you want to attack the guy in the front, but you also need to take care of the guy in the, in the back. So you need to kind of look to the front, look in the mirrors, do your rhythm. We see now Christian Lenhardt lapping. Our girl, the only girl on the grid. Asman doing a good job there to stay out of the way, stay to the side of the track, make it obvious which way Christian should come through. She knows that the others will be coming up to uh, lap her, the other leaders fairly shortly. And number one, Dennis Olsen. Not the champion himself last year, that's not why he's got number one. It's the team that won the championship to spend well up, but maybe he'll be having that number one for his own name at the end of the season. There's a very long way to go, though. After the Lazitz ring, we go to the Red Bull ring, to Spielberg, the Norris ring, the street circuit in the summer, the Nürburgring, ring, Saxon ring, and then back to Hockenheim to round out the season. And Dennis, Dennis Olsen, Olsen trying to dive, showing the nose a bit to Mikael Ammermüller. It's not there yet. It was uh, half a move, wasn't it? Thought he was going to go for it at one that point. But Dennis Olsen just backing off out of it, but just applying the pressure now to Mikael Ammermüller. He's definitely the quicker of the two at the moment, isn't he? But he's not feeling too much pressure from Nick Yaloli behind. 
so maybe the traffic might provide an opportunity if they get up to a couple of bat markers. Yeah, it's always a difficult situation when you are found, you want the traffic to pull away. Sometimes they don't see the blue flags or they, they try to, to give you the freeway, but it's not the best situation and then the guy in the back can have a benefit. We'll see if they can respect good the, the blue flags. We saw already Christopher Chucklin flashing the lights. It's quite funny, when you see Christopher Chucklin driving on the Caracal, he's always the only driver who has the lights on. <laughs> All the time. See Philip Sager and Stefan Rekov have a small loft up. That's, um, and that was that were the two cars that nearly uh, took each other out earlier. Yeah. Philip Sega had a spin and almost spun into um, the 33. Stefan Raykov's car, and then there is contact this time. A bit too close for comfort. Right, Olsen's close again. He's about a length back, probably a bit too far back to have a go. Try it now. Just for cycling, getting clear of the traffic. Now, Mikhail Mamula keeps, keeps Dennis Olsen behind. Now they're catching the traffic. Oh, will this give a chance? Some lucky for Christopher Circling, which Knight goes outside. Oh, and this gives a position to Mikhail Amamuller, who takes the inside line of Christopher Circling. So things might Circling just is now pushing now Mikhail Amamuller to the inside. And right on the outside. Locking like. a bit, pushing a bit, and he's also get this traffic away. Then he's also gets now the inside line of Amamuller into That's the fast corner. Amamuller stays behind. Exactly what he predicted. The traffic played here a big, big role. And then Dennis Olsen is getting close to Christopher Circling. Will he try to maybe catch him for second place? Amen Müller is also, he won't be happy now. That was smart driving from Dennis Olsen. As, as they were battling through the traffic, the other two, he just took a, took a breather back. He gave himself half a car length, went to the high line, the outside line, and then got a much better, quicker run coming through the corner because he wasn't delayed by the traffic. But we've got a safety car, or at least yellow, somewhere around the circuit. And this is shown by the graphic on your screen. So somebody has had a moment, I'm afraid. But very smart driving that from Dennis Olsen. So I'd be well pleased if he can pick up a podium finish here to add to his three wins. As you say, Mikael Amamal is going to be disgruntled. It was almost an opportunity for him to get second place. Socialing was the one that was held up most in the traffic, but he really did defend well. He wasn't going to let through. Uh, Mikhail Amamala taking a bit of curb there and getting the back end stepping slightly out of shape was Dennis Olsen. Zosling doing a great job. He's just got to hang on to this for one more lap now. Here we have a car in the gravel at corner number eight, turn number eight. It's yellow flag. We'll, we will not have a drive safety car. We will see now again the manoeuvre. Christopher Circling has an issue with the traffic. Amon Muller tried to push some pressure on him to, to battle for second position, but then he lost here on the outside to Dennis Olsen, who made a brilliant maneuver on the outside and get the third place of the last step of the podium. Yeah, terrific uh, driving that. Amon Muller took the risk to go second, didn't pay off, so again he's going to lose points to the championship leader, which would be even more frustrating that the one that got past him was uh, his championship rival. But this. Uh, driver Christian Engelhardt has been a classy driver in the Porsche Carrera Cup for several years now for five years and this is going to be uh, an important victory because it will be the first in the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland for the Black Falcon team the Czech and flag awaits it's been a supreme drive Christian Engelhardt wins here at the Lausitz ring it's going to be tight for second but taking his best finish of the season so far second place to Christopher Zosling third place goes to Dennis Olsen on the podium again for the championship leader Mikael Amamala losing out in the traffic fourth and then uh, fifth place going to Nick Yaloli. Crossing the line in sixth place now is Tommy Prining. So the Black Vulcan team, absolutely delighted that. They are well used to picking up trophies and taking wins, but this will mean a lot to score a victory so early in their Porsche career. Yeah, I'm really happy for them. I mean, it's my, kind of say my second family, so really happy to see them on the podium. They did a brilliant job. Uh, Chris, we know Christian Engelhardt is a really experienced driver. He, he knows how to drive those cars, but uh, today also nowadays with such a, car which have so, so, so much technique also you need to have a really good technique team behind and I know Nico is Nico Dreidiger is the team chef at this moment is in charge of doing all the set a massive experience we see also they are taking now also the win in the B class so happy day today for Black Falcon yeah. I know Alex Boehm the team boss my team boss as well he <laughs> will be really happy at home so I'm really happy for them they did a brilliant job they deserve it and I hope we can keep this vibe up for next week. Exactly. Yeah, it sets you up nicely for the 24 hours next uh, week, doesn't it? 
It's not so perfect. And, uh, well, <laughs> going a bit wide, the first mistake he's made, Christian Engelhardt, going off to the gravel almost there. Yeah, uh, picking some <laughs> extra weight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, and we saw, as you say, uh, Carlos Rivas actually pulled away from Wolfgang Triller at the end. Last time we saw them, they were nose to tail about three laps from the end of the race, but uh, tremendous uh, effort. Uh, the one that went off in the gravel there, you can see him out of the car now, was uh, Stefan Raykop, who had a few moments in that race, didn't he, in the number 33 car. That was where the yellows were out uh, for the last lap and a half of the race. There are the results said Christian Engelhardt wins by 5.6 seconds from Christopher Zoschling. Dennis Olsen extends his championship lead, though, in third. Mikhail Amamala, Nick Yololi, Tommy Prining running out the top six. Then it was Rettenbacher, seventh, Piana in eighth, Skoog in ninth, the ex uh, Swedish Renault Cleo champion, and running out the top ten was uh, David Kotman. Ryan Cullen in eleventh place, getting ahead of Max Van Splunter and later on, and putting away from him. And we saw Kim Andre Housechild crossing the line, only just clear of the number 11 machine of Richard Gonda. Those two battling hard for 13th and 14th place. And then 15th was the winner of Class B, which was Carlos Rivas for Black Falcon. So double victory for Black Falcon. Wolfgang Trilling second in Class B, but moving into the points lead now with Wolfgang Tan out early. And then third place, the other driver to come onto the podium will be Matthias Ciesarek for the Huber Racing in Class B. We see uh, both podiums uh, for classes A and B. But the front runners now making their way into uh, the pit lane, and it's going to be some big celebrations, I reckon, Alex, when uh, Mr. Engelhart gets out of the car. He's greeted by the team. So super drive uh, by Christian. And say there's a lot of pressure on him at the start because he knew how to get that start absolutely right. You said they'd be been struggling with the clutch a little bit, but it was perfect, wasn't it? Great getaway. Yeah, really good start from Christian Engelhardt. was solid from the beginning. He kept his position. Uh, the defend really good his position from Christopher Sackley, and then he put the hammer down. I guess also the like I was saying before, they have a really good uh, technical system like Falcon. So they had a car that was thought for the long race, not for the sprint race. So maybe they put some of the endurance knowledge into that car. But yeah. we saw the pace was really strong pace from Christian Engelhardt towards the end of the race. So happy for them, and this put him even he was missing. The first race in Hockenheim is now P4 in the championship. Yeah. And is the plan to do the whole season, do you know, for Christian now that he's uh, joined it? Yeah, he's planned to do the full season definitely, but he has some clashes, I think it's with Blancpain. Right. And he needs to, to attend his, uh, his, his, his races with uh, Lamborghini works drivers, his Lamborghini official driver. So that's why I think, I'm not sure if it's missing another of the appointment, I, I cannot tell, but I think it's some other clash. So it won't be, it won't the be year, so I think the full not, season. Yeah, he won't be able to do the full season. But yeah, happy to see Black Falcon cheering first win in the second event of the year. So good for them. Good job. Yeah, not bad. Uh, a pole position and a, and a win from the weekend for them. And good. a podium finish as well. Good job also. Happy Franz Conrad. Good job also. He's also in those last laps, clearing the traffic, getting the position away. Mikel Amamula won't be so happy, I guess, mm. uh, losing that uh, step on the podium in the last minutes of the race. But that's to, racing. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was just, it was just circumstance, wasn't it, with the traffic? It almost gave him an opportunity. He almost got second place in the end. He, he, he dropped to fourth, but um, yeah, just slightly unlucky there. Still having a good season, but um, he'll, as I say, be frustrated that the one that nicked the points, nicked the podium away from him, is the one person he wanted to make sure was behind him in the championship. There's Christopher Zoschling. Going through the race, telling uh, everybody what happened. Very, really good at the start, wasn't he, Christopher Zosling? He really did try to get the lead away from Christian Engelhart for the first four or five laps. But here are some slow mos of our top three. Dennis Olsen, that's three wins and a third now from the four races. Cracking start to the season for the Norwegian driver. He leads the championship, as you saw in the graphic a few minutes ago. Christopher Zosling moves up into the top three in the championship. Terrific drive in the Number 15, that MRS GT racing car, the team which are second in the team's championship. Christopher with a very good weekend, excellent entertaining drive and battle against Tommy Prining yesterday for fourth. And from the front row of the grid, he manages to hold on to that second spot in this race. But it was all about Christian Engelhart. Perfect start to the race. Had to defend for a few laps, as I say, from Christopher Zosling. But he did so very impressively indeed. And then what was even more impressive was the consistent pace that he showed all the way through the race. He was lapping almost as quick at the end of the race as he was at the start of the race. Nobody else was able to do that. And that is why he's been a front runner in the championship. That is why he's a works uh, Lamborghini driver as well. And he will be competing 
in a few days' time at the Nürburgring 24-hour race to try and get another good result with the team. So there are the top three cars. We'll have the overall podium for Engelhardt, Zosling and Olsen. We'll have Rivas, Trilling and also Jesserick on the podium for Class B. And there they're now being shepherded up to the podium. First one at the top of the steps looking remarkably fresh for a man that's been racing hard for the last half an hour or so is Christian Engelhardt. Waits for the others to catch up. Zosling there, the taller driver to the left and just getting his race suit zipped back up. That's Dennis Olsen, the Porsche Junior driver, who's also up onto the podium. Quite a few stairs to climb here. Bottle of water, much needed. I don't think I'd look quite so fresh if I got out of a Porsche after doing all that. Looks like he's maybe just had a mild jog for five minutes rather than uh, been through what he's a very physical, as Alex has been saying, very physically uh, demanding circuit. Michael yeah. Bechtel doing the uh, live podium presentations. He's about to call them up. Super fit, these guys, as Alex was saying this, they're huge amounts of uh, work in the gym with nutrition as well. Experts looking after these, uh, these top drivers. Excellent weekend for Christopher Zosling, certainly having his best start to the season so far. Christian Engelhardt, incredibly, after missing the first round, fourth of the championship after this weekend's results, the podium yesterday. And the top step of the podium today for Black Falcon for the first time, the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland. The team cheer their man, Christian Engelhardt, up onto the very top step. And you can see what it means to him to take the victory. Brilliant drive. And good sportsmanship between him, smiles all around between him and Christopher Zosling, who will be delighted, I think, with his second place finish. He couldn't have tried any harder, that's for sure. But the Porsche Junior driver, Dennis Olsen, will be very pleased with third place and more points as we get our winner's national anthem. The German national anthem sounds out and there is a warm round of applause from down below. Not just from Black Falcon team, also you saw Franz Conrad there in the middle, always smiling, hugely experienced team, defending champions of course. The silverware is raised aloft by your race winner for today. Tremendous drive by Christian Engelhardt. And a great effort this weekend by the most entertaining driver on the track, for sure. Christopher Zosling, tremendous second place finish there to add to the fourth place he got yesterday. And the trophy for third place to getting late on. Another one that preserved his tyre as well. The championship leader he will be after the first four races of the season. He's just got to keep it going now for another, what, ten races and he'll be the champion. But a very, very good start for the very quick Dennis Olsen, who has a bright, bright future ahead of him, absolutely. It's early in the morning, but they haven't got to do any more racing now, so it's champagne time for our top three, overall top three. <laughs> and you can tell they've all done this before. Well deserved and a brilliant performance. Always nice to see either a driver or a team picking up their first win. It's not the first win for Black Falcon, they've had many wins in endurance races, but it's their first win in this championship. Always nice to see. So while we wait for Class B podium, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the second race of the weekend here at the Lausitz Ring.
now it's time for our Class B podium. There is Wolfgang Triller, not on the top step of the podium, but he is atop the championship standings now for the first four races, defending his title. And we get our winner's national anthem now.